And hello again, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dennis. I am Pan Stoppelophilia Gamer. And today we are playing The Sacred Rings. The Sacred Rings is a sequel to the game Aura, Fate of the Ages, which I've done before. And there's been some changes in it. Um, you can tell it's the same game system, a lot of the same interfaces in place. But in this case, they've done a lot more cutscenes. They're trying a lot harder to get a viable storyline into this. So, in fact, we've already skipped over a cutscene. The thing literally opens with a cutscene that is the um, recap of the first game. So, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to back off a minute, and we're going to run that cutscene, and then we're going to see... Well, then we're going to start a new game, and you can see the um, next cutscene as it comes up. So, right now, this was the actual intro that we skipped over. Long has the Keeper's Clan known that to combine the Sacred Rings with the Tetrahedron would bring power beyond imagination and immortality. The evil Durad was unhappy with the Keeper's Clan and set out to acquire the Rings and Tetrahedron for himself. Gugan, a sorcerer in Durad's employ, is said to have instigated a rebellion for Durad, using his power to control the very souls of men. Upon hearing of the rebellion, Arakon, the leader of the Keeper's Clan, attempted to keep the artifacts from Durad. He enlisted the aid of his top student, Umang, and instructed him to safeguard the Sacred Rings and to locate the two tetrahedron artifacts so that they would not fall into the wrong hands. Umang's journey was fraught with peril, visiting the worlds of Edemica, Dragast, and Natiexu in search of the tetrahedrons. He encountered all manner of challenges. Hoping that his long journey had finally reached an end, Umang met Griffian, another member of the Keeper's Clan, on the Island of Unity. There, he learned that Durad's rebellion had strengthened in his absence, and that he himself was being pursued by Durad's henchmen, who would stop at nothing to recover the artifacts for their master. Umang had no choice but to follow Griffian's suggestion and open a portal to another world. A place where Umang could hide and protect the artifacts until the rebellion was finally over. Little did he know that his adventure had only just begun. Okay, and now that we're back, let's start a new game. Well, that interdimensional teleport gave Umang a complete makeover. He's got 
different hair, different clothes. Wow. Oh, finally awake, are you? So how do you feel? I've got a slight headache, but fine, I suppose. Rather surprised, really. I've never seen someone fall from the sky before. Neither have I. The name's Nikifor. And you are? Umang. Uh, look, Nikifor, was it? Where am I? In my house, of course. Isn't that obvious? I meant no offense. It's just, well, rather odd-looking for a house. Well, it might be odd-looking, but it's a house, and it's mine. I found it first, so I'm keeping it, and there's nothing you can do about it. You'll get no argument from me, friend. Well, I should hope not. Well, now that we've got that sorted out, I suppose I can let you stay for a while, pr provided you're willing to do a few odd jobs around the place. It's not like you have many options, anyway. <laughs> there's no way out of here. I suppose I don't have a choice, then. What do you want me to do? You can start by finding a way to open that big iron door. I, um, forgot how. Forgot how to open a door? In your own house? I need someone to help around here, not ask questions. If you want a place to sleep tonight, less talk and more work might be in order. Okay, fine. I'll see what I can do. You do that. I'll be taking a nap, so keep it down. I'm a light sleeper. And finally, after all of that, we take control. And notice that it is apparently uh, around 10 o'clock and Nikifor is sound asleep. It's also 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay, let's look in this cabinet. There's stuff in here that looks like it might be interesting that we can't do anything with, like that piece of paper there and that, and we'll actually see what that is later. But the main thing in here right now is this book. So let's look at it. It has pictures of animals and things with descriptions to them, like elephant, I depend only on myself, the graveyard, the final meeting place of all mankind, and so on. Uh, there's a lot of pages here, and there's 29. It's not worth trying to remember all of these. Uh, we just need to right now know that this book is here so we can come look at it when it becomes important. back out. Now one thing about this game is the mouse sensitivity varies greatly. I'm not really sure what's causing that, but sometimes I may move and the screen may wave around wildly. I'm not trying to confuse you, that's just what's happening. Anyway, if you go to the right out here, there's a door. Um, we need to go that way fairly soon. I'm going to go to the left to begin with just to show you a few things. First of all, just to the left, there is a door here. It's locked. It's locked. Now the main thing you have to notice is this door has a white symbol above it. Okay? Yeah, it looks like an anvil with a dot, but the color is more important than the image. So let's just remember the color for now. We'll go on through here. Um, there's a lever here. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and show you the lever. Um, if I pull the lever right now, nothing happens. It tries to work. And then doesn't. So there's something here that's obviously broken that we're going to need to fix. We'll worry about that later. Instead, I'm not going to go out there yet. We'll have to go there later, too. We're going to go through this door. Just to remember symbols, there's a blue symbol above this door. Now we are on what looks like the bridge of a ship or a submarine or something. That's curious for a house, isn't it? There's a panel here. Uh, we cannot really do anything directly with this panel, but you're going to be seeing it a lot, so I wanted you to make sure you knew where it was. It's on the wall here. I'm not going to go up to what looks like a control room up there yet. I'm 
Instead, I'm going to come down here. There's a bookcase with a book lying on the floor. And where the book was, there's a button. It's locked. Unfortunately, the button doesn't do anything right now. There's also a table here we can interact with. We can't do anything with it right now either. So, again, this is just to... So you'll know where these things are when we get ready to come back to them. And that's it for the front of the house. So let's go back to the back of the house now. This is the back. Uh, we'll go down there in a minute. But right now, we're just going to come over here and go in this door, which leads to the study. There's a lot of things in here. There's that little console over there. There's a desk. There's a globe in the corner. There's a swinging bird's cage that is empty. And what I think that's a dry aquarium. I can't tell. You can go look at it. There's nothing there to see. Instead, let's head on over to here. Now there is a obviously locked cabinet here. I need a key. As I said, obviously locked. The key itself is hidden right over here behind this rolled up piece of parchment. And again, it always bothers me that there's all of these things that probably explain things and I can't even look at them. But whatever. And I didn't mention it earlier, but yes, you see the interface here is exactly the same as from Aura. We have, still have the tetrahedrons, we still have the amulet that's being used to track us, and we have the book which will record the clues. There's actually nothing in it yet. We'll take the cabinet key, open this, and pick up this piece of paper. Now there's three phrases on here. I depend only on myself. Decisiveness is more important than eloquence, and it belongs to the grazer instead of the reaper. You may remember, I depend only on myself, is what was in that book with all the pictures and the animals and that sort of thing in it, and that was corresponded to the elephant. So let's go check and see what the other two are. really wanted to, you could have written down all of those before, but it's not worth writing down that new thing. You can just come back. So elephant is, I depend only on myself. The next one was decisiveness is more important. And that's here. That's an owl. Decisiveness is more important than eloquence. And the last one is it belongs to the grazer, which is a stack of wheat. It belongs to the grazer instead of the reaper. So we have wheat, owl, that's what the owl looks like, and elephant, which does not look like an elephant. It looks like it's more like a hippo, maybe. It actually looks like a bear. I don't know what that is. But anyway, we're done here. So now we have to go back to that study again. And we're going to go over here. I don't know what's up with that swing bird cage. Alright. Over here we have this thing that looks like a globe, and it has these little pictures on it. You may recognize these pictures as being as the same as the ones in the animals book. Now we're going to swing these around until we find something that's in our list. In this case, ah, there's the wheat that we had. Now if we scan through this one, there's nothing in this one that actually matches anything we've already seen. So we don't know what to put here. See, there's four rows. We only know three. 
Now we're looking for either an elephant or an owl. There's the owl. Let's find the elephant. There, there's the elephant. Now notice these are in a nice straight line, so we actually just need to find whatever will form a nice straight line with those two. So those don't quite line up. And it's that one. Which looks like a crocodile or a lizard or something. We pick up some keys. See, those are generator room keys. And if you look at them when they rotate, they are a little bit different on the end. But that's about all we can tell from them. Now let's go look at this desk. Looks like a captain's diary. Yes, that does look like a captain's diary, but I'm going to look at this first. This could be valuable information. Yes, it could. I had some trouble activating all of the devices in the vehicle. Once I had the crystals in place, I finally got it going. See, this calls, a, calls this place a ship. We have this device, a crystal, that doesn't help. A telescope and a safe. Now, here's these little sketches here. You notice there's a, another one in the front right here that's apparently been scratched out. So that's the second and third thing to do. We don't know what the first thing to do is. Then we have navigation map symbols, I, nose, hand, eye. An explosion. Interesting thought. Yeah, man, you're really excited at the thought of an explosion, aren't you? And we have the security box has a Roman numeral code 625. All right. Now we'll look at the captain's diary. Manula. Now, Manula Valley belonged to the keepers. Hey, that's who we're looking for. Maybe we need to figure out how to get to Manula Valley because there's a portal there. And he talks about his coordinates and the path from Manula. Remember, that's how he got from Manula to here. Was south, south, west, west, south, west, north, west, south. And he shows us this map, which has this big swath of forest or rocks or something, a smaller swath, and then this little patch here. There's nothing else in this book, so let's leave and let Nikafor talk to us again. What are you doing poking around in here? Didn't expect me to be keeping my eye on you, did you? Actually, I'm glad you're here. What does the word Manula mean? It's the name of a place, a valley. I was there once. It's nothing special. Nikifor, I believe there's more to your house than meets the eye. I think it can move. A moving house? You must have hit your head harder than I thought. I'm serious, Nikifor. I, I believe your house is some sort of huge vehicle. And with a little time, I think I can figure out where we are. Where are we? I know where I am. I'm inside my house with some sort of deranged lunatic. Why don't you come out of your fantasy world and make yourself useful? Yeah, you're starting to get the idea that maybe Nikifor has no idea what he's really doing here. I think Nikifor just found this place and moved in. Alright. Remember we had the controls for the security box? Well, here's some basically Roman numerals like we saw on that piece of paper. There's a button here, but it doesn't work right now. Remember it was 625. So 6, 2, 5. Now this works. Now there's pictures up here. See, there's that white symbol that we saw above that locked door up on the other level, or further back, and it has a single crystal. If I push again, there's a yellow symbol with three crystals, a blue symbol, we saw that over the door to the control room, four crystals, and so on. The black symbol has two, the green symbol has five, and the red symbol has six. So let's just keep those in mind. In fact, in fact, let's go see what we do with these right now. You can go downstairs. That door leads to the outside. There's really nothing to do out here. So we'll go out here just for part of the tour. And because this has the most amazing thing in it. Remember how all through Aura we were 
walking on these narrow platforms tens of thousands of feet in the air where we could fall to our death at any moment. This thing's five feet up, and it has a handrail. Obviously this is extreme technology to me. Uh, there's what looks like an elevator here with a lever. Um, you can't do anything with it. I mean, you can just stand on it, but you can't go anywhere with it, so just to report for now. We're going to go over to this door. Oops, there's one of those mouse control things I mentioned. Now, I kind of stumbled on the solution to this. I suspect there may be something somewhere which tells me how I'm supposed to solve this, but I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to give you the solution. Notice there are four keys here. Now, apparently the keys are always in your inventory in the same order, because if you move them around and put them back in there, this always works. So, if take the leftmost key and put it in the rightmost slot every time. So, leftmost key, rightmost available slot. Leftmost key, rightmost available slot. If you keep doing this, when you put the fourth key in... Success! Booming is happy. So, why I was supposed to put those in the slots in that order, I don't know. And I'm having trouble with my mouse again. There we go. So let's go down here. I'm going to come back to that little control wheel in a second. Going to the right from the stairs and going in here. First thing I'm going to do is walk over here. There's a wrench sitting on this shelf. I'll pick it up. I can't pick up anything else. And there's a symbol, this little drawing on the wall, which looks a little bit like a tic-tac-toe game with an extra row on the top, and only X was playing. But in X1, hey, what do you know? There's also this, which I can't interact with at all, but you see it's there, and it's a hot spot. So just remember that's there for right now. Now we're going to go get this device working. There's a control panel like here. There's a lever missing. There must be something around here that I can use to get this contraption going. Yes, there is a lever miss missing. Fortunately, we have a wrench. Now, remember the little tic-tac-toe grid, which is bottom, middle, next one up? Let's put these levers into that same configuration. Bottom, next to the bottom, and one above that. And that wasn't a mistake, it just activated the instant it got into position. And that turns this machine on. Alright. There's one more thing we need to do in here. And that is, we need to look at this little control wheel here. Now again, there's probably a reasonable solution to this, but just clicking on it till it gives you this cutaway to look at that panel from the bridge. Remember I showed you that? Is the only way I know of to tell which it should be. Now, yes, that symbol right there is one of the symbols on that panel, but so were several of those others. So. But it automatically tells you when you've got it in the right place, so it's not necessary that you get it exactly right. Here's another one. Just click on pictures until it gets the cutscene, and yes, that's the symbol it just attached to. And, again, two pieces that panel are now active. All right. This looks like an engine. I wonder what it's doing here. Well, Umang, if the house moves, I, su I suspect that the engine is what makes it move. Now then, remember we looked at the security panel up in the study, and it showed us how different numbers of crystals were associated with different buttons. Now, remember how the white button had one crystal associated with it? So we'll activate the one crystal, and then activate the white button. Now, I can't activate any of the others. See, nothing's happening. If I could turn off the white one when I clicked on it. So let's leave the white button on, one crystal, and let's go talk to Nikafor again. Because, yes, he's still following us around to see what we're up to. Well, I see you've been keeping yourself busy, though I have no idea what you've been doing. What is this? It's obviously an engine of some sort. An engine? An engine for what? What does it do? At the moment, nothing. There's no power. It seems like it runs on battery power, but the batteries are missing. Well, don't look at me. 
I don't have them. Are you sure? Maybe you picked them up without realizing what they were. I don't know what you're talking about. Now get out of here. Yeah, Nick of War tells us to leave and then leaves himself. He's upstairs asleep again. Um, and yeah, it's pretty obvious that Nick of War has no idea what the thing he's staying in is. So, it's not your house, Nick of War. Unless you're claiming squatter's rights. Anyway, I activated the white button with the one pistol, which was over that door. So let's go look at that door now and see what's going on. Look, it's open now. Now there's a lot of things in this room, so I'm going to start here, straight in front of me. Open this. And I'm going to pick up that device and this thing, which is an oil, oil can. can. Probably for lubricating machinery. Thank you again, Captain Obvious. That first device I picked up that Umang didn't immediately identify is a crystal capsule. And if you recognize it, it looks a little bit like a thing we saw in that piece of paper upstairs. I'm talking about crystals. So now let's go over here. Pick up that thing. That's a lantern. And just to the right of the door we have this rope. Now let's turn around and go to this hatch, or this dogged porthole. And we can see outside. Now I actually thought I could do something with that grapple hook there, but you no, know, if you put the rope there, it just ties the rope to that bar and lets you go outside. So. It's not the most convenient way of exiting the ship, but that's what you got. And you can only wander around a little bit here. You turn around and look at the thing, and that definitely looks more like a ship of some kind than a house, but there you go. That's all we can do out here, really, except pick up this. There's a crowbar right there, which we need to pick up. Alright, we're back inside, and if I leave, I actually picked the rope back up, as opposed to leaving it there, which may or may not be a good thing. Alright, what I need to do now is, I've done the one crystal door. Before I can do anything else, I need to open, activate two crystals. So, wow. So let's go downstairs and go back to the engine room, to that control panel, and activate two crystals. Now, this gets really annoying fast, because you have to do this a lot in this game. You have to keep running back and forth to this location from all over the ship. And I wish there was an easier way to do it, especially after I've demonstrated that I can control do it. Now remember, two crystals, it's the purple or black symbol that gets activated. Those are actually in order. One, two. Those are actually in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then that's in order. All right. In case you're wondering what now, we're going to go to that little hidden door behind the bookcase. opened with the purple or black, the two crystal symbol, even though there's nothing to actually indicate that's what we call this room to open. We're going to deal with that now. Now it works. And, oh look, I think we found the owner of the house. 
Yeah, he's been here a while. Um, there's the symbol, by the way, which would tell us that I needed two crystals to get in here. Now, the fact that I had to have gotten in here before I can see the symbol is anyone's guess, but whatever. There's a telescope here that I can pick up, and below the telescope's a button. If I push that button, it causes that machine to open. Now I can't really do anything with that machine right now. Over here, I can pick up another one of the crystals. And if I open this... Now notice it didn't show me what I just found. It just activated the book, which was a little annoying. So I have to flip through the things I found. It showed me this. Notice that there's all red at the top, all blue at the bottom. That actually corresponds to this device. But I can't do anything with this yet. See, no interaction. But again, just remember that it's here. That's the self-destruct mechanism, by the way. And if I go to leave... Now we're back on the bridge. But I have a third crystal now, so I can activate a third thing. So let's go to the third, back down to the engine room, put the crystal in place, and activate the third device. Again, you have to run up and down this a lot. Alright. Now I have a third crystal, which obviously goes in one of these slots, but it won't go in. It's not clear. You have to use the crystal capsule. If you use it, it puts the crystal in for you. So now I have three active, and this is the three button here. I think I said four, five, six before. It's three, four, five, six. Green is five, red is six. So there we go. Three active, and I've activated the yellow one. Even though we don't know where the yellow one is yet. But we're about to show you. Remember that lever I pointed out to you earlier? That was beside that door, and the lever didn't do anything? That guy? Okay, we're going to fix him. In order to fix him, we have to go outside. And here we go, there's a waterfall and handrails. Amazing things, aren't they? Now, the trick here is to close the door again as it goes as opposed to going through it. And there's, there's a ladder on the back of the door. We can climb up onto the top of the house with this. Now there's a green symbol. Remember the green symbol was five crystals. And that's actually the engine that runs the house. Now, if you look over here, there's a rock stuck in this track. And what we're going to do with that rock is use that crowbar we picked up earlier to get rid of it. And that's actually it. We still have the crowbar, we don't have the rock. Now the lever inside will work. We open the door again. Go back inside. Yep, the 
It's a steampunk elevator. Let me rock get all the way up here. I need to put it there. There's something that's my end slide on it. Okay. And here we are in the telescope room. Now, you may recognize this thing over here as the thing we saw described as a safe earlier. Um, it's got the yellow button on it, and fortunately we've got our three um, we've got our three crystals activated, so we should be able to use it. Now, this is actually solved using this puzzle, or this clue here. This shows the order we need to push the buttons in to open the safe. But remember, I pointed out that there was a first symbol that was missing. So we're on our own for the first symbol. So let's just sort of click these at random and see what happens. And you see if we get it wrong, it closes back. So it's basically a matter of trying to figure out what... And I backed out instead of... It's basically a matter of clicking the buttons in order and see what happens. Okay, that locked open. So it's top, bottom, right, left. Now the first of our actual clues was right, bottom, top, left, and then we just do them in order counterclockwise from here. That opens the safe and let us pick up this thing, which is a telescope key, which is good because we're wanting to use a telescope. So we'll go back over this way. Now along the way I'm going to stop and look at this. There's another one of these little wheels here. And this one, let's try to get here. Nope, here. Everything but the one that I tried first. There. Okay. That's active even though we don't have a glowing line. That's obviously the right spot. So now we have to go over here and look at this device. This is the place where we put our telescope key. Which activates the telescope. And Umang, why don't you look at the telescope and tell us what you see. Yes, there's someone coming. You don't know it yet, that's the Shadow Legion, that's obviously the guy that the big baddie at the start of the opening cutscene told us to do. And this cutscene is going to actually go on for a while, so we're going to let Umain go deal with this, and this looks like a good place to stop. So, we'll see you next time.